Hi, my name is Dr. Landon Pryor, and I'm a board certified plastic surgeon. And on this channel, we discuss luxury self care practices of all forms. Welcome to today's conversation about the Botox Brow Lift. Be sure to subscribe below and leave a comment with any questions you have about facial procedures. So we're going to talk a little bit about Botox Brow Lift, which is essentially a non-surgical way to do a uh, brow lift procedure without having to do a surgical brow lift. There's lots of ways to raise the brows, and that's a more youthful appearance for some patients that uh, are looking to rejuvenate the upper face or area around the eye. The Botox Brow Lift is very popular and effective because it's a completely non-surgical way to get some elevation of the brow. Uh, typically that has to be done every three to four months as the neurotoxin doesn't typically last much longer than that. Patients are probably familiar with neurotoxin or Botox, uh, which is a popular brand name. That's typically a uh, injectable that's used to paralyze specific muscles around the face. Commonly uh, treated muscles include like the corrugator here between the eyes, the frontalis and the forehead, the orbicularis around the eyes, the procerus, uh, kind of running into the nose. And so by treating all those different muscle groups, you can uh, minimize or paralyze uh, those muscles completely so that the lines that patients have, the wrinkles that they have either at rest or with animation are reduced or eliminated. So one of the more advanced techniques in neurotoxin treatment is Botox brow lift. And the reason that's a little bit more challenging is because we're trying to manipulate the action of different muscle groups in that area. So for example, the frontalis muscle is an elevator of the eyebrow and the orbicularis muscle, which is the sphincter or circular muscle around the eye, causes the eye to close and squint. And so through a combination of the you know, biomechanical forces of the, of the neurotoxin, you can modulate what you want the brow position to be. So for example, if we paralyze the frontalis muscle while also paralyzing the orbicularis muscle, that'll actually relax the muscle around the eyebrow and cause the eyebrow to elevate. So that's really the goal of the, of the Botox brow lift. So again, with the Botox brow lift, it can be done you know, within minutes in a non-surgical setting. Uh, cost is pretty minimal, it just takes uh, a few units of uh, neurotoxin in the right place, and the results can typically last for three to four months. Other options for brow lifting uh, can be something that are either semi-permanent or permanent. Really popular right now is also uh, threads, which can be placed in strategic areas around the face, including the uh, eyebrow area and forehead for non-surgical uh, lifting of that area, which could also result in a eyebrow lift. And then of course, there's surgical options such as a temporal lift, uh, which can be done under local anesthesia. Uh, with elevation of the outside of the eyebrow as well as a full brow lift under general anesthesia. So lots of options for brow lifting. Least invasive uh, is the Botox brow lift in appropriate uh, hands with a skilled uh, injector. Uh, patients can expect to see some uh, conservative improvement in brow position for three to four months after treatment. So with regards to different incisions, obviously the, the Botox brow lift is just a needle. It's usually a really small needle, like a 30 gauge or a 32 gauge needle. So there's obviously no incision there. Uh, threads require a very small entry point, uh, but again, no visible scarring following the threading technique. And then becoming progressively more invasive as we go into more of the surgical approaches, there's the temporal lift, there's an endoscopic brow lift, and then there's the full brow lift. Uh, more commonly, we do now what's called an endoscopic brow lift, which is done through uh, minimal access uh, entry points uh, in the scalp, so it's behind the hairline. Depending on the surgeon, it can be a variable number of uh, entry points, usually four or five, uh, only a couple centimeters long. And that allows the surgeon to introduce instruments as well as a camera 
to appropriately release the ligaments that need to be released to get elevation of the eyebrow. And then a less invasive approach would be to do just one portion of the full endoscopic brow lift, which is a temporal lift. And typically that just involves a small incision in the temple. That's designed for patients that are looking for that lateral or outside brow elevation and temple tightening without addressing the rest of the forehead or eyebrow. In a, in a similar fashion, the appropriate uh, dissection is made and the underlying tissue is elevated and secured in position uh, with uh, sutures so that it heals in that position permanently. Knife or needle. Whether or not somebody is a better candidate for a non-surgical treatment or for a surgical correction is really going to depend on what they're looking to achieve. What do they want from the outcome? Uh, what are they looking to invest in the treatment? What the initial presenting uh, appearance of the patient looks like as well as the underlying anatomy? What the patients are looking to achieve with regards to uh, budget for their procedure and downtime potentially? Whether or not they want to go through anesthesia and recovery and associated scars? So generally that's a discussion that you need to have with your provider. The way that I like to do it is we've got the services uh, all under one roof here so that depending on what the patient wants, we're able to achieve that. The practice was designed that way so that we could appropriately make recommendations to patients uh, for either surgical or non-surgical uh, services and really depending on what they're trying to achieve from an outcome standpoint. So uh, somebody that's looking for something more conservative uh, as long as appropriate expectations are set, may be a better candidate for the needle, uh, which uh, is the non-surgical approach. Somebody that's looking for something more uh, durable, long-lasting, something more dramatic, is usually a better surgical candidate. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like below. We love to hear your questions in the comments and subscribe to stay tuned for next week's show. See you next week.